I'd love to start this video by telling you how exciting my mornings are, but the truth is they're pretty standard. And when I'm working for myself, like today, they mostly start the same. I'll get up around 7.30, shower, make some breakfast, and give Pocky some much needed attention and biscuits. Since I've started working for myself, I have a rule to be on the computer and working by nine o'clock, which I'm pretty good at sticking to. I'll usually make a nice tea for myself and bring it up with me to get the day started. So you're actually joining me on a really good day for testing out the Mac Studio. Now I've been using it for a little minute now, but you'll get a good idea of this video because I've got all of the things that I would normally do in like a freelancey day to do today. So I've got a bunch of 4K video editing to do. I've got a bunch of Zoom calls to do, which I've been using the iPad Pro for with universal control. That's how these two are connected at the moment. And I've been really enjoying that. So I'll show you some of that. I've got a face-to-face -face meeting for my brand with Kuroku. So I'll bring you along for that too. And I've got a bunch of general computing tasks to do as well, along with a tiny bit of design work. So it will be a really good day to show you what the Mac Studio is like. So I think we should just get right into it. The first task I always do is to make a to-do list on Microsoft To Do and answer emails. Getting emails done in the morning stops them from hanging over me all day, so I like to crack them early if I can. I'll also check my Notion to make sure I'm on track of my current video ideas and progress. While I'm busy powering through those, let me explain the current Mac Studio setup I went with. This is the M1 Max variant with a 32 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a terabyte of storage, meaning it's upgraded a little from the base model, but nothing too crazy. I did consider going for an Ultra, but I really didn't think I'd need that much power, even though it would be nice. The thing that taxes my computer the most is 4K video editing, so I was pretty confident the M1 Max was going to be enough for that. The center of my desk setup at the moment is the Dell U2720Q, a 27 inch 4K monitor, which was really well priced and feature rich. And to be honest, it's one of the main reasons I didn't go for the Apple Studio display because this has been treating me really well since I got it. Oh, and to help out with storage on the Mac Studio, I've got this two terabyte drive from Kingston. This is the XS2000 SSD, which has crazy high read and write speeds of 2000 megabytes per second. And it'll be taking over from my last SSD, which has been full for ages. As for the rest of my desk, and you'll have to excuse the busyness of it right now, I'm moving everything over from my PC to the Mac Studio, and I've still got quite a few bits of client work sticking around on the PC, so I'm still turning it on a lot of the time to grab files, and for some other reasons I'll explain a little later. The most interesting and new part of my current setup though is the iPad Pro on this awesome stand, which I'm now controlling through Universal Control completely. Universal control is really awesome and it lets me move my mouse and keyboard from my Mac to the iPad with no barriers at all. So I can still use the iPad as an iPad without having to change any of my input methods. It's honestly so awesome and I've really been loving it. Using the iPad for Zoom calls, checking Twitter or keeping my emails up on a separate screen has been a really interesting productivity boost. I am planning on making a video on this and on the stand really soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. So I wanted to touch on performance of the Mac Studio because for the most part, it's really living up to the hype. It's much quicker than my PC was, which is really good. And I can open apps really fast. And importantly for me, the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite seems to be working really well. So Lightroom, Photoshop, InDesign, Adobe Edition, all those sorts of apps are working great. However, if you're a Premiere Pro user like I am, you'll know things are never really that simple. And that's actually where I've been having quite a few struggles. The main one that came up, which was initially, was when I was moving the playhead or clicking anywhere within the app, it would just be like half a second behind me. Doesn't matter what I was doing, even if I was pressing like file and open, things like that were just, just like a microsecond behind what I was doing, which kind of just made my workflow feel really strangely. Um, but that wasn't too bad and it, that doesn't seem to happen all the time, weirdly, it's not happening right now. But the main thing is, if I were to export, which I have been doing on the Mac Studio, if I use hardware encoding, which is the quickest way to export and really like uses all the power of the new Mac, the resulting footage is absolutely, you know, it's unusable. It's like really torn up and it's really glitchy and it's not very nice. However, if I use software encoding, which is slower, that seems to work fine. I did talk to Adobe about this on Twitter and they're completely aware of the situation and they're currently trying to sort it out, which is really good. And I can actually use software encoding to get a result, which is still absolutely perfect. But for now, that's why the PC is still here because I'm jumping out of my Mac and back to the PC just to export things, which isn't ideal, but I'm pretty confident Adobe will sort it out, which is good. 
but yeah, that's the main frustration with the Mac Studio so far. Another thing I've been making time for recently is Instagram Reels and TikTok. So before the morning is out, I'm going to film some vertical content for that and get it all backed up and imported into my short form template on Premiere Pro. And as silly as it sounds, because I know it does, one of my favorite features of the Mac Studio is the memory card reader front and center. For a content creator like myself, one of my most common interactions with any PC is getting footage and photos off an SD card. So having this on the front just makes that whole process faster and easier, and it means I can leave the dongles behind. I'll continue to work on video editing until around 12 o'clock where I'll normally grab some lunch, but today I have a meeting with my good friend Rachel to speak about our brand Kuroku, and luckily for me that means only needing to head next door. We'll get some tea on the go and begin the meeting. We've been running Kuroku together as a passion product since lockdown in 2020. Since then we've managed to push out a bunch of physical and digital products, and we've also had the pleasure of working with other YouTubers like Knoopsy. Today we're reflecting on our latest release which was the Tayo wallpaper pack which I'm sure some of you might have seen. We were super proud of how these came out and are really thankful to those who picked them up. I've said it before but it really does mean a lot to us and we're always so stoked to see them being used out in the open. Our main goal today however was to nail down some new sticker designs as we were retiring our old ones. Rachel showed me a bunch of her ideas she made on her iPad in Procreate and together we decided what style we wanted to go for and how we wanted to present them on the website. It's actually quite hard to find a sticker supplier that's environmentally friendly as well as producing great stickers, so I said I'll do some more research on that this week before we go ahead and place any orders. After about an hour, we'll wrap up and I'll head home for some other meetings that I'll be taking online. These are usually client focused, but today I'm actually only meeting about my YouTube channel and some possible brands to work with. This is one of the areas where the iPad Pro with universal control has come in really handy. As the Mac Studio lacks any form of webcam and I don't personally own one, the iPad can handle all of that for me. So I'll simply tilt the iPad a little closer to me and run all the meetings through there. After that, I'll get back to editing the Instagram Reels so I can post it later today. While I'm finishing up with these edits, I wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Artlist. Artlist is a royalty-free and sound effects licensing platform that helps creators such as myself to add high quality and most importantly, fitting music to our videos. I've actually been using Artlist to source all of the music from this video you're watching right now. So if you like what you've heard or the general vibe of this lo-fi music, which I personally love, then Artlist has all of that and more covered. One of the best things though about Artlist is how simple they keep it. Browsing huge amounts of music on websites like this can be really tricky, but with the array of filters combined with the For You page, finding tracks I like can be really fast, which is a bit of a godsend. Artlist are constantly adding new music and sound effects so the chance of you not finding something you like is really slim. It's nice and safe too, all of the music you end up using for your projects is covered forever with a really simple licensing program. For creators like me, the personal plan covers all of your social media channels for life, even if your subscription ends up expiring. So if you do want to give Artlist a go, then follow the link in the description and you'll get two months added on top of the yearly plan completely free. And of course, a huge thank you goes out to the folks over at Artlist for sponsoring this video. Okay, so it's just gone six o'clock and I finished up everything I needed to do today, which is good, but I do have one more thing to do today, which I'm really excited about, is I'm appearing on Miyoko's podcast, which is awesome. And we're recording it properly, so I'm going to use my proper camera and a microphone. I just picked up the Rode pod mic, so I'm excited to use that, it's brand new to me. Usually I would take that call on my iPad for that sort of thing, but we're making it look all glossy and all nice and all that sort of thing, so I'm gonna use the proper camera for it. Anyway, I'll link it below if it's out and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll go really well. I thought I'd show you the overly messy podcast setup. There's a Mac Studio, which everything is plugged into. I've got the Rode pod mic set up and ready to go. That's running through this sound here and that's plugged into the Mac Studio as well. There's my A7 IV, which is delivering the video feed and that is going into the Mac. And then I'm using Sidecar to push the viewing screen over to here. So when I'm looking at the screen, it doesn't look like I'm not looking at the camera. So yeah, there it is. Hopefully it works out all right. Really happy to say that the podcast went really well and we had a lot of fun talking to each other. We spoke about lots of things like what makes a great desk setup, our favorite tech products right now, and how we're both still really addicted to our Nintendo Switches and Breath of the Wild. 
I did want to say that the Mac Studio also really kills it when it comes to I.O. There were plenty of ports on the back here for me to comfortably run this podcasting setup and there wasn't a dongle in sight, which was just wonderful. Depending on when you're watching this, the podcast will either be live now or it will be very soon. So I'll link it below if you do want to check it out. To finish off today, I always pack down everything no matter how messy it is and then I'll try my best to leave work behind me for the day. So that's probably one of the best examples of a pretty busy day in my life right now of working purely on my own endeavors and how I've been using this Mac Studio pretty much since I bought it. Generally speaking, I have been really enjoying the Mac Studio so far. It's probably the closest Apple have got to making the perfect PC for me. And as soon as Premiere Pro gets its button gear, I'm really hoping everything will fall into place nicely. Either that or I'll finally make the jump and switch to Final Cut. Before we head out though, I did want to mention that when Apple released this Mac Studio, they had this big mention of it being a modular system, which initially was really exciting. The idea of perhaps being able to upgrade some things on here after the fact was really cool, but on reflection, and quite clearly now, they meant the accessories around the Mac Studio and not the thing itself, unless they're planning on adding something later down the line, which I can't imagine they will. That makes sense of how these chips are all self-contained, but even being able to add things like storage after the fact would have been awesome. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, then leave a T emoji. I really appreciate it. I always like to see who's watching these right up until the end. And if you have any questions about the Mac Studio, ask away in the comments below and I will try my best to get back to you. As always, thanks for watching. Leave a like on the way out, that'd be massive. And I will see you all in the next one.